Today's video is going to be a small little production run of what's known as light cover switches. <clears throat> Welcome back to the shop. Today's video is a small production run job that I have here in the shop. They're, uh, they're lockout covers for switches. And really the idea is to put a switch into a, uh, a position and bolt the cover over so no one accidentally turns the switch on or off. Small little production run, about 15 units. They are made out of um, one inch uh, cast acrylic. And really what I did, it's, it's not a very in-depth video, it's just really more of a how it's made type of a thing. So I basically filmed uh, each operation, uh, you know, as I, I'm not filming 15 pieces being made, so just every time a new operation came, I filmed it. What I used was this little, uh, this little clip here. I got this on Amazon, and basically you just slip your cell phone into it, and I have it attached to this Noga Hold It arm and my tripod so it makes capturing what I'm doing in the shop a lot faster and easier uh, rather than uh, you know this whole elaborate setup of, of cameras and stuff like that which will allow me to make some videos uh, faster um, and really just kind of film what I'm doing here in the shop because it's so hard to find time you know in between the jobs so sit back enjoy I hope you like it it's a it's a short video it's pretty cool it's, uh, it's a interesting little project and let's begin right now. I started off by cutting the blanks to rough size and what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these by three and I'm going to use a fly cutter and we're going to clean up one side, flip them, do the other side and then uh, obviously do the other side and the other side. We have five extras for uh, <laughs> mistakes so let's get started on the mill. The cutter I'm using is simple. It's a high-speed steel fly cutter it will easily uh, handle the width of this block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch off and then I'm gonna just come up 50 thousandths because I need to take off about 100, so I wanna divide uh, the meat that has to come off into two cuts. Um, I actually might take a little bit more off this side just to make the other one more of a finish cut. Uh, but <clears throat> let's come over here. And I'm just rubbing the pulley, or rotating the pulley until I see this make contact. Definitely nothing critical. All right, I can see it. There we go. I'll just lock that. Get this out of the way. Actually, we've got to come up 50 thousandths now. Again, nothing critical. Get this ready to go. Check our, we got it covered on that side and we got it covered on that side. All right. Get a really nice finish. I mean, it's cloudy because it's high-speed steel, but it's okay for that to be that way. You're not going to get with you know with machining marks. You're not going to get this to be crystal clear. There's all different ways of polishing this with um, chemicals. I forgot what chemical you use, but you 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 um, I'm sorry, vapor vapor polishing. You could heat it up and and glaze it over, and it will get crystal clear. Because as you know, this is cast acrylic, and cast acrylic is used in Oh God, all kinds of, you know, your, your um, eyeglass lenses and all types of different things. So it's able to be polished like glass, but we don't have to do it on this job. Trust me, they're real smooth. <laughs> I got the five groups. There's one more in the mill. Five groups 
uh, faced off on one side. Got a nice finish. Uh, I measured a couple in each pile and looks like we need to come up 45 thousandths to do this side. Just made the adjustment right there. You can see on the Z axis, I came up 45 and whatever, eight tenths. We have that tolerance. So we are now getting ready to do the other side. Now that the blocks are all squared up, the next feature that I have to put on here is round over these corners. I have a quarter inch uh, radius tool in there and I'll show you how I'm achieving that. six more to go. The next feature that I'm cutting here is these 45 bevels. They're going to go all the way around the part. There'll be a hole here and it's really like clearance to put your screwdriver. So what I'm doing, it's a very easy setup. I'm just grabbing this 45 wedge and putting it here. I hold the, uh, the piece here, lock it down and send the end mill through. And I'll show you that. And that's it. Now you see in this, this flange hanging over here, all these pieces are going to get mounted in the vise and planed over to bring the, you know, to reduce the overall height of this. So that's, uh, that's that. The next operation is going to be to counterbore a two and hundred thousandths diameter hole. I think it's about six hundred thousandths deep down in the part here. So what I did was I mounted up the 12 inch Bridgeport rotary table. This thing is a beast. I almost threw out my back trying to lift this thing. Um, I used a coaxial indicator. I have a plug. There's a hole in the center of this and I have a plug. You put the plug in there and it fits. It's a tapered, it's a tapered diameter so it fits snug and, and bottoms out in the hole. Then I used a coaxial indicator to center the rotary table with the spindle. Now, the, now the, uh, the, the challenge is to center the vise with the work um, in line with the spindle. So what I did was I have, you know, I have the, uh, the vise on here held down loose, it, it's floating right now, um, with some, t uh, some toe clamps. I have my stop set up. This, this is the fixed jaw and this is the fixed side, if you will. So we're going to come in here, we're going to have a positive stop this way and a positive stop this way. And I'm going to tighten this guy down and I'm using a wiggler and you can see the wiggler has been set pretty dead perfect. And I'm just trying to find the, uh, the, center, part, the, the center point, which I've scribed. If you could see there's some scribe marks in here and I put this on my granite table. Um, with a surface gauge and I marked the center. Pretty simple stuff. So now I'm gonna pull out the old optivisors and we're gonna we're gonna locate the center, bolt this thing down tight so it doesn't move, and then uh, I'll be able to to uh, to cut and counterbore the hole. 
So I'm going to do that right now.
Now the next thing we have to do is just put a little tiny chamfer on this inside edge. It's the same procedure as, uh, as the holes. I'm just chucking it up. Tiny chamfer on there, nice. These are some test pieces I was running, and what I had to do was I had to take some thickness down. So the dimension needs to be from this face of the hole, from here to the edge, needs to be three quarters of an inch. This is like one inch stock. So I had to take some um, material off. I used a big face mill and just blasted it right off and didn't film it. This is what it looks like. Very rough lines in it. So what we're doing is got a fly cutter in there. I'm taking 10 thousandths off to clean it. Now the last operation is to just drill four holes. They are equally spaced so I could drill, I could rotate, then I could flip it, drill, and rotate, and they're all in the same spot. So I've dialed it all in, did the math. Well, there you have it. We are done. We got two extras, so I'm going to put this into the uh, the display case. Get these parts off to get laser etched. Uh, the the parts that I make here in the shop, most of them all need to be laser engraved. Uh, so with that, I thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.